guys, it's Mike and Renee here. As you can see, we are in a hotel room today. We're live from Deco Summit 2023. And this is gonna be our day one recap. So you will be seeing the uh, seeing us walk the floor. We'll do a quick little uh, voiceover recap of that. And then we'll come back and talk to you about what we saw in the classes. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hi guys, Mike here. So unfortunately, some of the footage from the showroom floor didn't really come out great. It was really shaky. So I, I tried to edit it as best as I could. I removed the audio and kind of sped it up a bit. So hopefully that shakiness uh, isn't too much of a problem. So sorry about that, guys. I'll you know, try and get this uh, right next time we're out and about. But until then, just enjoy this uh, little bit of footage from the floor at Deco Summit 2023. Thanks. just coming here uh went to recap day one of deco summit 2023 uh here in miami so it was uh really nice uh glad that we were able to get in and uh get all settled so it was a little mess up with the airplane obviously you know weather here in florida kind of is intermittent raining and things like that so it took us a while to get in but thankfully uh we're here now we didn't miss any of the of the conference absolutely so day one was jam-packed with all kinds of information and we just want to summarize the different sessions that we went to to kind of pass on some of that information to you so day one started out with the opening address from henry ma who is the ceo of Recoma. very informative um he talked about some of the uh, challenges that you might face as a small business owner and just very informative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had a lot of good information to pass on, you know, as the CEO or, or the head of Recoma himself. You could really tell that he uh, had been working in all facets of the business. He let us in on a little tidbit of information that when he first started or, you know, when Wicomos was first getting up, if you would have called in, you might have gotten him on one of the service calls. Okay. And so he, he's been there, uh, you know, from, from the beginning, has, has obviously, you know, kind of uh, worked at, at all the stages and has information and knowledge about <clears throat> business as a whole, but also uh, the embroidery business, the apparel uh, decoration business as well. So he gave us uh, a lot of tips in his uh, Don't Go Broke uh, yeah. presentation, w which was great. Uh, just things for... Uh, budgeting and pricing, pricing for profit and stuff like that. So we have uh, so some little things and there's a lot of things that we kind of knew, but it was uh, reinforced, you know, by hearing uh, mm -hmm. such a, a big business mind saying so as well. So you want to, you know, look for things like uh, upselling opportunities. You know, if you're 
selling some shirts, maybe you can sell them a back or, or sell them a sleeve. And now, you know, your $10 shirt is maybe 12 or 13 or uh, hats. Cross-selling. Cross oh, yeah, or, or, yeah, or even cross-selling. Mm -hmm. So if uh, you have a lot of people that are getting T-shirts, maybe uh, try and get a polo in or a hat or a visor mm -hmm. as something to uh, add on to that order. And these are a lot of tips that he was giving us to work with your existing clients. Uh, he mentioned how uh, time consuming and expensive it was to try to obtain new customers or new clients when you can really be uh, kind of wringing the juice out of, out of those uh, existing clients, those people who already like to work with you. And, you know, you're not doing anything underhanded. You're just offering them, you know, an additional item. And you know, if they don't need it, then OK. But if they do. Not your right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Henry also talked about the importance of delegating, um, which is something that we definitely had to work on. But the eventually you get to the point where there's only 24 hours in the day. And in order to grow your business and expand your operation, you will eventually have to delegate. And the things that you either don't like to do or you're not good at doing are the first things that you should look at delegating to someone who is good at doing that particular task. Right, yeah. So if you're thinking maybe uh, taxes, uh, payroll, just kind of bookkeeping uh, in general, <clears throat> uh, order organization, uh, stuff like that, social media, marketing, sales, you know, all those things are really important for your business. but. Uh, you know, like, like when they said, this is only 24 hours in a day. And we've kind of been victim to that by working in the business as opposed to working on the yeah. business because it's just the two of us. But if we could maybe train someone to, uh, you know, press T-shirts or uh, weed vinyl or, you know, whatever it is, anything kind of uh, menial in the shop that can relieve us so that we can be thinking about more kind of, uh, you know, upper type of uh, yeah, more <laughs> business growth yeah business growth type of things we can go out doing those sales and meeting people's and and stuff like that you know working on new equipment and things like that and you know not be just kind of bogged down by pressing totes and pressing tees mm -hmm. all day and stuff like that so so yeah a lot of good information from henry and the opening address and in the pricing for and, profit yes, video, yeah. yeah or presentation excuse yeah so then next we went to the presentation from Heart and Hustle Printing, uh, who is Joe Perez, mm -hmm. and he talked about scaling your business. And he has a very interesting story. He's a veteran uh, from the military, started out in his garage, and eventually um, acquired another business, a vinyl business, uh, incorporated that um, into his business, moved to a bigger um, space, and now has eight uh, employees. So he talked about having SMART goals for your business. And SMART stands for have specific goals that are measurable, attainable, realistic, and has a time frame to it so that you're able to actually keep track on how good you're doing with reaching your goals. And you know, um, that way you can tell if there's something you need to change or tweak or whatever to reach your um, specific business goals. Yeah, and so again, just seeing things kind of written down and, and hearing them from another business owner really uh, drives the, the point home. and. You know, obviously having things written down and having like some sort of a, a goal system is going to be uh, optimal, you know, for, for running a business. Because now I can look at the calendar and say, oh, you may be a bit behind here or, you know, mm -hmm. we're on right on pace uh, to complete this particular goal. And on the second side is this saying, I want to be rich really isn't a goal, you know, right. like just saying, oh, we want to make it isn't a goal. That That's not something that's measurable. It certainly is attainable, but it's not a, a measurable and it's not a step to getting there. So that's just an end goal. Yeah. yeah. So I think when we get home, we're definitely going to uh, sit down and come up with a, a nice smart goal for the rest of the year and then maybe uh, into uh, 2024 as well and uh, keep uh, taking uh, or marking our, our progress uh, as as we go along the way. Yes. So yeah, that was a 
a good little uh, presentation uh, from Joe also uh, kind of reinforced the fact that we don't want to do DTG printing. So, <laughs> y'all, <laughs> team more integrated apparel. You not be getting DTG uh, apparel or, or garments from us. I'm sure there are plenty of other uh, printers who who love that space and love that method, but seems like it's too much up, up in the air yeah. for, for us. So we're going to stick with the DTF for now, uh, Plastisol, ink transfers, embroidery, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. So Joe had a story where he shipped off an order that he had done by DTG. And the shirts, I guess they were kind of a brown or a tan shirt, but it looked like they had a big wet spot on the shirt which was the pre-treat mm. that he had to put on for the, you know, the DTG ink to stick to the shirt. And so the customer called back and he's like, this is not good. It looks bad. And, you know, so Joe was like, just, you know, wash the shirts and that'll go away. So they washed the shirts and it did go away, but we don't want to be in a situation where... Right. You had to try and explain that to a customer. Mm -hmm. Or what if they're in a situation where they weren't planning to wash it first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could be so, handing out the shirts at the event. At the or event something like or that. something yeah. like that. So I was like, no, I heard enough of that. <laughs> so we can scratch that off the list. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to stick with uh, what we know. Uh, right. Joe did seem to want to do everything. And uh, he was saying a lot of his team were telling him, no, you know, just Don't stop. Get now, yeah, we're not trying to do laser engraving. We're machine. not trying to do this and that. We're sticking with the basics. So we're going to try to do that and really hone our skills in on the embroidery side and uh, DTF and paper printing and things like that. And we'll actually speak to you guys uh, a little bit more about that in the next video in the day two uh, recap. So stay yeah. tuned for that too. Yeah. So uh, the next one that I attended was Building a Loyal Customer Base by Robert Walker. And he is R&R &R Embroidery. And um, his class was interesting because he went around the room and had the, all of the attendees introduce themselves and say a little bit about their business. Um, and I'll get back to that in just a second. But for Robert's tips, he said, make sure that your customers feel appreciated. Um, he would give his customers a little gift, a little appreciation gift maybe a cap or a tote bag or something um, on their special occasions. And he tried to make it so that it wasn't necessarily tied to a sale so that every time he interacts with his customers, it isn't always to say, you know, I'm trying to get a sale from you, but just to say thank you. Um, you know, maybe at the holiday time or something like that. Uh, then he also uh, said, make sure that you address um, issues quickly with anything that went wrong with the order or something like that. Make sure you address it quickly so that the customer has trust um, in you and your business. But the interesting thing, um, when we were going around introducing ourselves, there was a lady in the room who mentioned that she started in her basement in January, 2022, meaning a little over a year ago. And now her business has grown to 1.5 million in sales. So <laughs> we were like, wow. Right, right, you really wanna listen in. Wow, like, what did you up. do? Yeah. So she said the major turning point in her business was when she, um, registered um, as a woman-owned business. And so once she had that designation, it really opened doors for her to work with large corporations um, who have set aside to spend a certain amount of money with small businesses. So the key takeaway there is we need to get certified right, yeah, yeah. as a minority-owned business. Uh -huh, yeah, so. minority woman -owned. And So if that applies to you, definitely think about yeah. it. I think our issue with it was uh, the time and the cost. So now I, I don't know what, what the cost is now. This was a few years ago when we looked. But I do remember it being a substantial cost. 
and a substantial burden to gather documents and things yeah. like that. So they're going to want uh, tax statements. They're going to want P&Ls. Um, and I believe even for us, they even ask for like, personal information. Yeah, like, your uh, personal tax returns. Yeah, stuff and... like that. And so it seems intrusive and it seems a lot, you know, when anyone can say you can look at me and, you know, see a woman or see that I, you know, I, I'm, I'm in a, a minority class. And so... Uh, it's a little weird, but if, you know, this is just one more thing that we have to do to be able to get into the kind of upper echelons of business and, you know, start working with city and state governments and, you know, large businesses uh, like the lady in the class, something we're going to have to do. She she got a contract uh, to embroider, I believe, right, for an embroidery yeah. contract with a, a large national company. And she said that has set her pretty much straight. I don't think she does work outside mm -hmm. of outside yeah. of that company. So... Definitely some things to think about, guys. You know, sometimes there's a, a lot of things that just take us away from the business. We go, oh, I'll, I'll think about that later. I'll look at it later. Or, you know, you can see me and see, <laughs> and see yeah. I'm a proud person. So, so why do I have to be uh, certified? But sometimes that's what those companies need in order to release those funds. It could be uh, for, like, uh, tracking purposes or, you know, financial purposes, whatever it is. But sometimes they got to really want to see that uh, certification, guys. So sometimes it takes a little bit more to invest in yourself and, invest in your business to kind of get you where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least was um, social media marketing by Ashamet Hurd. Yeah, and he was pretty good. This guy uh, does hats mostly, uh, and he blew up uh, on, the, on, on the internet really with the viral videos, and that's why they brought him in. So he, uh, well, what his particular big three uh, are, it would be TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Mm -hmm. So those were the social media platforms that he focused on the most. Obviously, we know there are more, and if you already have a following on something else, then I think, you know, obviously, all these same tips and tricks will apply to a Facebook or to a Twitter or, you know, whatever uh, that might be. So it was just important. He really wanted to drive home the point of consistency uh, so just put up these videos and that's what we're going to try and do uh, as well. We're going to try and stick with the Monday and Friday re re uh, release schedule uh, for our videos. We're trying to get something out for you guys. Uh, you know, obviously we're committed to, to the YouTube and we love our community and we want to, you know, keep feeding you guys with information about running a small business or anything that we come across that, you know, other decorators may not have thought of yet. Yes. So that was great. Just all in all. I thought that day one was great, mm -hmm. had a lot of uh, valuable information, a lot of um, content. We saw um, other YouTube Yeah, yeah, a lot of personalities. other YouTubers. Yeah, yeah, everybody was in the building so, yesterday and folks were taking pictures yeah. and everything like that. So I, I agree, yeah, this was a, a great uh, informational kind of uh, conference, you know, a little bit better than something that's just like an open floor concept, like mm -hmm. a printing United yeah. where you're there to look at the equipment as opposed to kind of learn and sit back and meet other people in your field. Yeah, so it was really great and stay tuned for our day two recap. All right, thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.